to the chat. Just a simple plus. Okay, good. I can see some pluses. That's nice. Um, good to know. Good to know. Um, we've all experienced that. Um, so, um, what can we do? And let's start from the tasks. Um, let's start from the tasks for the lessons and um, for the course in general. When we think about bridging the gap, and the whole thing I'm going to be talking about today is all about um, the three uh, core concepts in setting goals. When we think about a learner, a learner needs some core work. Um, if you like, uh, we have a syllabus. Um, which we need to follow, and this is the core work the students need to do, so that, you know, at the end of the course, they take a task um, and um, they can prove they've learned this. And there's also some remedial work which needs to be done. Um, oftentimes, um, there are foss fossilized errors which the students um, carry into our classroom. Um, there are gaps in the knowledge because some of the things were picked up rather than uh, learned in a formal or an informal environment. And, and, and th there's also um, lots of other things uh, in terms of remedial work we need to do. Um, but this is all about the students past experience and past learning in the past, which they haven't done enough of. Oh. There's also some extra work which can and often needs to be done um, in terms of the tasks. Um, <clears throat> when we talk about those things, it's very, very important to um, keep in mind that um, when we say we want to bridge the gap, we often think about taking weaker learners to the level of the stronger learners and making sure they have progressed enough. It's very important to keep in mind that the stronger learners uh, need to stay challenged and need to stay motivated in order to continue progressing, uh, to continue progressing at their pace and at their level and to keep to remain strong. Um, and it's important to make sure they remain interested in our lessons. So how can we achieve this? Let's move on to some more specific strategies. Um, we're going to start by talking about the basics, and this is uh, classroom management. And there's lots and lots of things we can do in terms of classroom management to bridge the gap. Um, first of all, um, it's very, very important um, to establish and maintain the eye contact with all students, whether we're doing this in an online classroom or in a face to face classroom. Eye contact is a very, very powerful tool which helps us tell the students, I am here, you are here, I know you're here and I'm listening to you. Um, when we establish eye contact, the students know that we are paying attention. Um, I personally, um, at the beginning of the lesson, like to make sure I've had eye contact with everyone uh, at least a couple of times. Um, in the past, when I just started teaching, um, I was a very shy teacher um, and occasionally I was avoiding eye contact with stronger students. Um, and once um, one of those stronger students came to my director of studies and complained and the complaint was um, the teacher is not paying attention, enough attention to me. Um, she rarely looks at me, um, which made me think about it um, and make sure I do this more often. Um, if you can, it's a good idea to ask weaker students to sit at the front um, for a number of reasons. First of all, so that it's easier for us to monitor and see where they are making mistakes and where they might need additional help. Secondly, because weaker students are normally um, shy and they won't want to participate. So when they are at the front, it's easier for us to involve them. Um, Classroom management is, uh, well, nominating is um, part of classroom management. Um, and when we are monitoring and when we see that weaker students have done this and this correctly, I often make a note of those things they have done correctly so that I ask them about those 
particular uh, points. Um, this is just to keep them motivated and to make sure that they don't feel shy or embarrassed because they don't know something. Um, monitoring is one of the key things um, in my lessons and I also often teach on, on all of my teacher training courses and when doing professional development at our school, I um, say that monitoring is one of the key things. Um, when we monitor, we often see what mistakes the students are making um, and we can help them immediately. Um, when we are monitoring, and by monitoring, I mean coming up to the students, coming more closely um, and looking into their papers um, to see where they are, what they are actually doing. Um, so in addition to seeing the errors, we see when we can finish the task. Um, I personally, in a lot of cases, say or ask, have you finished? Um, shall we move on to the next uh, task? Shall we do feedback? Um, and, and sometimes, you know, the shy students who haven't finished, they're too shy to say, well, no, we haven't. Um, so when I monitor, I see when to stop the activity. Um, in addition to this, um, because we're talking about attention to students, it's important during monitoring to um, do a little bit of social engagement. That means to come up to the students and say something kind, point to the right answer and praise them um, and possibly um, help them or, say, or just say something nice. And sometimes it's enough to just say, oh, I like your hair today, so that um, the students uh, feel that um, they are cared for. Um, when the students are working in pairs or in groups, there's often a question of um, teacher intervention. Um, and I personally think, um, and I've experienced this a lot of times, that teacher intervention uh, can be harmful, but if done properly, it can do a lot of good um, to the students. Um, if I see that in pair work, one student is uh, less active, and the other student is being uh, more dominant, I often prompt uh, the weaker student. Um, it's a good idea to do that in a joking way. Um, if I hear that one student is, um, is, is um, doing a monologue um, right now, I say, and what does your partner think about that? And they often stare at me and say, oh, I don't know. Um, and um, this way, um, I prompt them to involve the other students. Um, I've just seen a comment in the chat that pair work is not allowed um, right now, um, which is true. There are countries and there are cases where uh, it will be difficult to set up pair work. For instance, um, in Ukraine here now, um, we try and make sure that there is a distance between the students. They, of course, have to wear face masks. Um, and, and our classes are um, a lot smaller, but we still do set up pair work first because it's impossible to practice some things without pair work. And, and secondly, um, because um, we want to give them more opportunities to speak. We don't know what will happen in September, unfortunately. Um, at least in Ukraine, we hope that we will come back into the face to face classrooms and everything will be OK. Um, what if we can't? Or what if uh, I am a teacher who decides to teach online only? There's also a number of things we can do in terms of attention. Um, first of all, um, in an online classroom, it's very important to have this uh, contract with the students that they keep their cameras and sound on um, throughout the whole lesson. If they need to stop participating, of course they can uh, switch off the cameras and everything. Um, however, I always insist on having the cameras and sound on because this allows for participation. Um, the other thing, and I mentioned it in my previous webinar, um, which I did for Macmillan in May, and I'm going to say that uh, again here. Um, there's been some research which says that um, in an online environment, 
um, it's very, very easy to um, appear or seem to be less friendly or less interested or less involved. The reason is, first of all, um, very little eye contact. Um, you will notice that, you know, um, sometimes you're looking at the camera, but the students think they're not, you're not looking at them. But also,